My name is Jonathan Hargreaves, and this session takes a look at catfishing. Quite simply, you've been catfished when you have been interacting with a real person who has created a fake person online, whether through social media or dating websites, to form a relationship with other people. Some catfishing may be no more than an attempt from a lonely person to find things they are missing in real life. That could be romance, excitement, or an emotional thrill. But instead of being open about who they are, they hide behind a persona. In these cases, they're victims. They are the unsuspecting people they interact with. Usually end up feeling a sense of betrayal, embarrassment, or having been robbed of countless hours investing in a false relationship. So let's take a look at some signs to prevent ourselves from being catfished. If within the first few exchanges, the person seems to be pushing the relationship forward at a rapid pace without ever having met us, we are most likely being catfished. If they seem serious but strictly want to keep to written communication or phone calls, there's a good chance they are hiding their true identity. Don't forget, having a social media account these days does not guarantee someone's identity. If someone online has romanced you and is asking for funds to be sent to them or a friend, take this as a major red flag. And you know that adage, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Well, does every picture look perfectly modelled and flawless? Not everyone who's travelled for a living is a con artist, but if the person you meet online has a job that causes them to travel often, make a mental note. This may be an excuse for them to never be available for communication where they'd have to show their face. And if they claim to be from an English-speaking country, but there's evidence that they have little command of the language... Don't be afraid to ask more questions. And finally, whether they are trying to gain our pity or our money, catfishers know how to pull on emotional heartstrings. So be careful of that elaborate story. I mentioned on our previous slide that being on social media is not a guarantee of someone's identity. And so if you've met someone online, it's a good idea to make sure they are who they say they are. One way to do this is to look them up on social media sites like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, or to search their name in a search engine. Of course, not everyone has social media, but if someone's on a dating app or website, they're more likely to have some other form of social media. And if you find them online... Things to look out for are the number of photos. It's normal for people to have more than just one photo of themselves. Take a look at the quality. Do they have a few photos, but they all look like they've been taken by a professional photographer? Catfishers often steal photos from the internet and they often choose professional looking shots. And finally, be wary of people you do not know sending you messages through your social media account. They might be flirty to try and trick you, so it's best to stick to meeting people online through dating websites. Next concern is, are they asking you for money? If you've been chatting away to someone for a while and everything seems great, but then they ask you for money, think about it for a while before you send them any. Is it early in your relationship? Is it appropriate for them to be asking someone they've only known for a brief period of time for money, especially as they've not met you in real life? It's common for catfish to ask for money that appears to be for your benefit. So, for example, they want to visit you, but they can't afford the plane ticket, so they ask you for the plane fare. Another technique is to start by asking for small amounts of money, then gradually asking for more and more each time. You may want to be generous, especially if you're in a new relationship, but think about your best interests first. Is the relationship moving quickly? Relationships normally develop over days, weeks and months. 
And if someone is telling you things like, I love you and you're the one and I can't live without you within a few days, this should be setting off serious alarm bells. And have you spoken face to face? Even if you live in another country, there are ways of meeting online now through Teams, Zoom, Skype and FaceTime. And if they are avoiding showing you their face, this could be a sign that they are not who they say they are. You should try to arrange a face-to-face -face chat early in the relationship. Is it too good to be true? Be honest with yourself. If the person you're chatting to seems to have a wild and interesting life with loads of stories to tell, could it be too good to be true? People aren't perfect, so the person you met online probably isn't either. And finally, do their stories add up? Human nature is to believe other people, even when the facts are stacked against them. But watch out for inconsistencies in people's stories, and if someone doesn't make sense, ask about it. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this session, and I hope to see you all soon.